off. Here, let me go ask him. Who? Ace has been in the finals before. Will is a perennial challenger round. <laughs> Person who finally made the finals. Yeah, he was saying that. say that on Facebook. Finally, three, three. Uh, Wonder is a former world champion. Wonder? I don't think so. Super. No, I'm pretty sure. All right, for those of you listening, we are going to be running the finals in 10 minutes and 24 seconds. Testing, testing.
Hello everybody, we'll be getting started here in just a few minutes. Esteban is wandering around and uh, all the competitors are hovering by the ring. Uh, while we're waiting, I just wanted to thank Four-Legged Flicks for providing the live stream. I know there were some technical difficulties at the very beginning of the Challengers round. Uh, I'm a techie person and I have no idea how they put all this together. They've got all this equipment and uh, they're doing the best job they can. So just bear with us if there's any technical difficulties. I think everything is all worked out now. We've got the commentary, we've got the video. I think they might even have some slick graphics coming up uh, that they're going to be trying this year for the live stream. And they are, of course, accepting donations um, for this service. Uh, you know, it's, they're providing it completely free, but if you are enjoying it and if you can, uh, donation is appreciated. So we will be getting started here in just a few minutes. Okay, we've got the first dog on the line. Oh no no no! This is the white dog. This is the this is the uh, FEO dog. This is giving the judge a chance to see if um, where they're standing, they can see everything and make all of the right calls. So we were confused there for a second, but this is a demo dog giving us a look at how the course is going to run. This is something that you'll also see at the international team tryouts, and you actually see abroad at the big competitions like the Agility World Championships. This also mitigates some of the disadvantage of being the first dog to run in your particular height. This way you at least get to watch some dog run that course and perhaps identify any problem areas, um, kind of level the playing field a little bit. For those of you just joining the live stream, brought to you by Four-Legged Flicks, I'm Esteban Fernandez-Lopez alongside, <laughs> alongside Sarah Fernandez-Lopez. And we are coming to you from Reno, Nevada. This is the American Kennel Club National Agility Championship. And this is the finals. We have finally arrived after three long days of trialing, exciting runs, fantastic courses, We've got a great crowd here for the finals. Course designed by Carol Mount, and I believe she's also judging. There will be a spotter checking out the dog walk. Okay, I think we have a second demo dog here, yes. I believe she was one of our challenger round competitors. 
All right, now we're going to get started with the four inch preferred class. The first dog at four inches is going to be Daisy with handler Wendy Liu. This is a Pomeranian, and I remember watching them on the live television broadcast of Westminster. So they were in the Westminster finals this year. The ring crew is making the final preparations here, dropping the height of the jumps down. The judge is going to come and make sure everything is set, especially the double. The double is one of those obstacles, along with the triple, where the only height you know to set is the one that you're always running in. If you don't have a little dog, you're not sure what to do, and if you don't have a big dog, you don't know what to do. That's right, and if you're watching the live stream on the main feed, you'll see that they have um, added some new fancy graphics letting you know which dog and handler is running and showing you the clock for the entire time. So these are some technologies that they're um, experimenting with this year and uh, hope to make the experience even better for all of you watching. And here we have Wendy, Lou, and Daisy. They've been having a great year for this dog and handler team to make the final at Westminster and then show up at the national championship. Oh, but we get an immediate off course. Yeah, this course starts off with an immediate backside to the number two jump. And the dog cut behind the handler. Wendy's recovered. She's got Daisy over the dog walk now. And now there's a very sharp turn here to the tire, up to the seesaw. We'll see a little bit later on how some of the bigger strided dogs handle that. A beautiful wrap there after the seesaw. She's got Daisy into the tunnel, and now she's going to pick Daisy up. Now you see Daisy right there as she came out of the tunnel, really looked at that jump. And again, when you move to the bigger heights, that jump is so close to that blue tunnel. We'll see how many of the large dogs really look at that jump. Another beautiful tight wrap here to close out. And very nicely done, Wendy Liu and Daisy. Apparently she has some fans sitting right behind us. Next up we have Mike McCoy running Buddy Lee. This is the dog that made it in on the challenge round. Not only that, they are the 2012 preferred national agility champion. Now it looks like we have an issue with the clock. It looked like there was an issue with the timer, but it also looks like it reset correctly. He's got his dog. Well, no, now the timer has stopped, so okay, so I'm there's not some sure kind of issue. Hopefully, they have time. backup clocks on this run because he's running clean. So this is Mike McCoy and Buddy Lee up over the A-frame. He's going to blind cross after the A-frame. Very nice turn into the far end of the tunnel. He's going to make sure that he picks his dog up out of the tunnel and doesn't leave any chance that his dog is going to be confused about where they're going next. That is a very interesting element of the course, that the dogs come out of that tunnel and have to make that sharp turn. He's got a beautiful wrap here after the shoot, and he's going to run it out. And we don't have a time because of the, the time faulted. And I think they're going to take a second and see uh, if they can figure out why that timer didn't go. So we get some times for the rest of the dogs. You can hear the crowd yelling, timer, timer. But I think they're well aware of what's going on. They've asked the next handler to step back for a moment. I see Gail Storm walking over. 
Okay, they've tested the timers. Unfortunately, we don't have a time for that clean run. So it's going to be a little bit hard to track what's going on. There are four dogs total in this class. Buddy Lee was the second one. There's only two dogs left. Coming to the line is Lori Matthews and Bella, a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. After Bella, we'll have one more dog. So we do have a clean run from Buddy Lee. We just don't know what the time was. Looks like she's going to do a running start here with the dog. That can make that backside hard, but she was able to get that with no problems. Very nice. Accelerating down through the dog walk with a nice running contact. I see her go a little wide to the tire, get her onto the seesaw. Very nice. She opts for the wrap. It's going to be very interesting to see which way people are choosing to take that wrap. That's the number 10 wrap. And she's going to rear cross to the tunnel. Nicely done. And again, really she picks up her, dog. up her dog. Now, I, I just noticed that her dog looked at the A-frame. So not only do you have to bring them off. Oh, the dog comes out of the, the weave poles there. Yeah, but and you're right. Coming out of that tunnel, they look at the jump and the A-frame. That's right. She All wanted right. a wrapper, but she ended up rear crossing her. The dog had a little confusion as to whether or not they were going to wrap or rear cross with a time of 53.555. So we still have, this is the last dog to go. We have one clean round and we don't know the time. Now we have Andrea Samuels with Chase. Andrea was in the Westminster Finals this past year. Um, she has, uh, some of her previous dogs have been in the, uh, have been national champions, but not this dog that she's running right now. This is Chase. This would be amazing. This would be her third different dog to win the AKC Nationals. Beautiful, solid dog walk performance. A good turn to the tire. A nice hold and wait there on the seesaw. A pretty good wrap, a little bit wide after that. A good turn to the A-frame. A solid A-frame contact into the tunnel. Let's see her pick her dog up after this tunnel. Nicely done. And you will notice that these dogs are weaving right into the ring gate. Very tough. You might see other dogs pull out too. And oh, she's going to go the other way. Very nice. One more jump. All right. We have a time of 46.014. Now, we do not know what Buddy Lee's time was, but we think she is the winner. I assume that they have some sort of manual timing that they used for Buddy Lee, and so they know that Chase is now the champion. So that is her third dog to be a National Agility Champion. Congratulations to Andrea Samuels. Carly, 2012, Sparkle, 2011, and now in 2015, Chase. And she has another chance. Sparkle is in the finals later today in the 8-inch class. That is amazing. So a little pause for a picture here. I love that. They're taking pictures right by the last obstacle, which is the triple. So they're in front of the triple. She's got her papillon in her arms. In between the AKC officials there. Holding her bar. A tremendous accomplishment. Congratulations again, Andrea Samuels. And there's the victory lap. Okay, I was wondering if they were going to do the victory lap. All right, somehow when we blinked, they set all the bars to eight inches, and now we have the eight-inch preferred class. There's four dogs. We're going to start with Renee Foster and Quincy, a Swedish Valhund. A very well-handled opening. And a nice, solid dog walk, a good turn to the tire. She's handling with the dog on the right. Let's see which way she takes 10. She's going to wrap it to the left. I think you're going to see most dogs take that jump 
and wrap it that direction because of the line that it sets up for the next couple of jumps. Here we go, they are getting into the weave poles here. Slowing down a little bit. Like I said, they are weaving right into the ring gate. And she is going to turn her dog to the left. And she has a time of 46.886. Next up, we've got Diva Wilson and Tommy, and this Parson Russell Terrier came out of the challenge round. They were the challenge round winner. That means they're fast, and they have the ability to win this final. Very well handled opening. She's Under getting way out ahead. Beautiful running dog walk. She's going to do a front cross and almost loses her dog to the off course jump, but gets him to the tire. Front crosses at the end. He takes a face plant, gets right back up. A beautiful wrap. Heads for the 180 to the A-frame. And Diva is running. And she's going to blind cross that A-frame after the A-frame. Very well done. Tommy takes a long look at the A-frame, but he gets into the weave poles. The shoot sets up for this final wrap. A little bit long. And clean, 45.050. This is your new leader. Diva Wilson and Tommy. Now here we have Carol Newman and Shetland Sheepdog River. Making sure she gets that down, downside of the dog walk there. We've got two judges looking at that down contact. Beautifully done wrap into the 180. Headed for the A-frame. Oh, and they get called on the A-frame. We cannot see the down from where we're at, so we're just going to uh, Have take Have to a trust look. the judge there. That's right. Going to wrap to the left and finish out fast. Very nice time of 43.21, but of course that A-frame contact is going to eliminate them. That would have given them the lead. So this is the last dog that can bump out Tommy. So this is Susan Leitner. Leitner and Danny. She's getting some very, very nice controlled turns there. Squarely into the contact there. Off of the seesaw, she's approaching the number 10 wrap. Nice job, 180. And let's see how she handles after the A-frame. She's going to blind cross. Beautifully done. She sends the dog into the tunnel. She's headed for the weave poles. And the dog gets a pretty good turn to the weaves. Now into the chute. Oh, she's going to take her dog the other direction on that wrap. She can definitely do it. And she she's does done it. it. 42-82. And that is the national, the preferred national agility champion for the 8-inch class. Susan Leitner and Danny, congratulations. National champion. She gets the hug from Carrie DeYoung. She can't believe it. The adrenaline rush is so much. The emotion is so high. They're going to take a victory stroll here while she catches her breath. It's a very tough environment for any dog and handler. Her dog is not quite sure what's going on. She's going to take a little loop. And why not? She's going to come out and hug the judge. I like that. Now remember that the finals are reverse seated, which means that theoretically these dogs are getting faster and faster as we go along. However, the challenge round dog gets randomly slotted in, so you always get this little jolt of um, speed from that challenge round dog. All right, we're going to move on, reset the jumps to the 12 inch class. We're still doing the preferred dogs here. There is a whole army of volunteers out there, very thankful for the volunteers that make this event work, out there setting bars, changing the A-frame.
And they're not wasting any time. That next dog is coming in right now. We're going to start with Mary Obedinsky and her rat terrier, Willis. <laughs> So this year's National Agility Championships in numbers was smaller than last year, and that, that's reflected in these finals. There are only four dogs here in the 12-inch preferred finals. She opts for the running start here, just releasing the dog uh, with the hand on the collar. Beautiful job on the opening, now onto the dog walk. Judges carefully watching, a very nice turn to the tire. Now to the seesaw. She's going to front cross here. That tells me they're going to go the other way. And they sure do. Almost goes off course to that double. Gets a spin and a refusal. The judge is going to call that. So that is the first dog that, that went that opposite direction on that wrap. That's is. a tough call there. It was very close to the uh, job. Oh, and she slipped out of the weave holes. It is rap choices like that that make a course very interesting. Here we're going to get a lot of encouragement from the crowd as the dog finishes out the run. I totally agree with you, Sarah. When they have rap choices, it's just another way for handlers to differentiate themselves from each other. When you have a really good idea of what your dog is capable of and which line is the fastest, that can give you an advantage. Looks like they're going to check out the A-frame here, make sure it's uh, stable. And the right height. That's true. And the next dog that we're going to have is Catherine Nelson with Shetland Sheepdog Rhyme. And this is the dog that made it in from the challengers round. I think any of the challenge round winners are capable of winning the final. <laughs> she has a very vocal and organized group of fans cheering for her. That's right. Beautiful job on the opening, 270, followed by a front cross, and now another front cross. She pulls her dog to the dog walk. Up on the dog walk. Very solidly of the yellow, a good turn to the tire. Onto the seesaw, beautiful seesaw wow, performance. Really stuck it. Nice job on the 180. This dog takes some very nice lines. Kind of kind of slipped on the up of the A-frame there, but was able to get its feet back underneath it. She is going to catch her dog's head coming out of that tunnel and get to the weaves. Looks like she's going to turn her dog to the left here. Finish out strong. And she's clean with a time of 44.188. Very nicely done. She is the new leader with two dogs to go. Of course, the last two dogs in this 12-inch preferred class are Border Collies. So we have Aaron... Notech. Notech. Esteban's the names guy. And I think I may have gotten it wrong, even though I actually spoke with her before her run, just to get her last name correctly. <laughs> That's right. She's running Bella. Beautiful dog walk. Very, very nice wrap there. Very tight lines. They're having a great run. Solid on the A-frame. Picks her dog up to the weaves. Handlers are doing a really good job there, recognizing that they need to pick their dog up there at the top yes. of the tunnel. She's going to turn her dog left to finish out strong. Yes! 42.167. We 40. have a new leader. The next dog has started. They went really wide on that backside, but they are now getting it back together. This is Terry Leclerc and Heath. I believe they may have a history of the finals uh, in the past before. This Border Collie has been very quick in 16 inches for a long time, but we're getting some wide turns here. Almost loses his dog before the tire is able to recover. And he's still oh, got it. He's still and got still it. And still oh. at oh. Almost. It's really hard to get back on track there. The, the line was not what he expected it to be for the dog coming out for that jump. This means that Aaron and Bella is going to be your national champion. Right, oh, now he's going to show off his weave pole skills. He is probably not even in the frame of your camera. He's got just two jumps to go. 
I think I see Aaron over there with Gail Storm. In tears. All right, and we've got a little stoppage in the action. I believe they should do the picture taking with the bar. They've got a supply of bars just right outside the ring. So as soon as someone wins, here she comes. Erin and Bella, your 2015 12-inch preferred national agility champions. And that is a dog that looks like he enjoys a victory lap. He is like, let me run around here as many times as you'll let me. I think they've started a tradition here of hugging the judge. <laughs> I think Carol's probably extra huggable. And now it's time for the picture. I imagine for some of these dogs, taking the picture can be just as exciting as doing the run. That's right. We will be moving the jumpers up to the 16-inch position to represent the legs and these six dogs. Meanwhile, while they're taking the picture, the ring crew are running in to reset all the bars. We're getting set up for the 16-inch preferred height class. There are going to be six dogs running in this. All right, we have the first 16-inch preferred dog. This is Amanda Emery with Border Collie Wildfire, also known as Wi-Fi. And they're off. They go ahead and get that backside, no problem. Wow, we're hearing the announcer say it's her sixth consecutive final showing. A beautiful wrap here at number 10 from Amanda. Wildfire, also known as Wi-Fi. Doing a very nice job. A little wide out of that tunnel to the weave poles. Encouraging her on the weaves to nowhere. And it looks like she's going to set up for a shoot here. And they get a very nice turn and she's going to finish out with dog on left. All right. 43.251. Very nicely done. First dog, that's our first clean run. Now we have Kim Terrell and Steeple. They are actually a national agility champion, having won the 20 inch class in 2009. Now they're running 16 inch preferred. They actually came out of our challenge round today as well. A little wide there in the opening, but that's okay. A hard call off of that blue jump. Back on track now, into the dog walk. A little wide to the Definitely tire. Definitely looked at that off-course jump. She's just going to run with that. Wow, and she is able to get back on track even though her dog went... Oh, oh my goodness. A near refusal. But she is still holding this run together, trying to add a preferred national championship. 37.661. That is our new lead time. Oh my gosh, and her dog is going nuts with his leash. <laughs> and Kim did a really nice job of holding that run together. There were a couple of different places where it looked like it was going to go haywire and that she was going to get either a refusal or an off course, but she held it together. This leaves them in contention to add preferred national agility champion to their national agility champion title, one of the few dogs who would have both, that's if she wins. All right, we have Carrie Wesson and Edge, an Australian Shepherd. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh, now that was, dog looks okay, but that was a rough fall. He really, really tried to hang on, fell off of it his rear like feet It looks like somewhere first. at the end of the first plank, yes, lost the rear feet, scrambled to try and hang on, and when they do that and they lose their hind legs, Everybody's they're scrambling with their front clap. legs. Um, I don't know if she's going to go on. It looks like she's going to try and get back on the dog walk. Yay! Loud cheers for that. That was quite a fall, but now that dog appears to be happily running the course. And that's got to be a really scary thing. You know, with most of these preferred dogs, you have them, they're a little bit older, or they're coming off of injury. 
or some combination of the two. And you know she's got to be worried about the dog. But he looks totally okay, barking in the weave poles now. A little confusion over number that uh, number 18 wrap, but saves it Very nice. and finishes the run. A big hand. Nobody wants to see that happen to any dog. In I'm agility. just glad that glad they're okay. They look okay. Okay, now this is Janet Dunn and Epic, a border collie. Now she took that backside of number two, the um, from the, the, the other hard side. Rapway. Yeah. Very interesting. She's getting some nice turns, though, nice tight turns. Very quick border collie. Beautiful rapid number 10. Into the 180 and takes a bar. The, the number 11 bar comes down. Now, I will note that it's a wingless bar. When you combine soft dirt and wingless jumps, sometimes you're going to see some bars fall. All right, next in we have Pete Pettinger and Buddy, a border collie. And it looks like we have an immediate bar down. It's going to take them out of the running. Oh my gosh, it gets a little hop off of the hop of the seesaw. It's still quivering. Little turn in midair there on the rear cross. Getting into the weaves. Very nice weave pull performance. Very nice run, but of course that early knock bar. So now we have one more dog that could knock out Kinterell and Steeple, and it is a Vijla, and here they go. This is Vijla Chili Pepper with Dale Hopkins. This is a very nice dive, but it is going to be very tough to knock Steeple out. Dog walk looked a little high to me, but both judges were right there. No call, but they do call the seesaw. And it looks like he was trying to wrap his dog over number 10. The dog read rear cross and went the other way, and the handler was not able to recover. As wraps and full post turns find their way into AKC Agility, you're going to see more of this rear cross versus a wrap confusion in dogs. It's a beautiful wrap at 18, though. Nicely done, a time of 44.383 for Chili Pepper. And your national agility champion for 2015, as we watch Chili Pepper wipe out the uh, ring gate there, is Kim Terrell and Steeple. They add the PNAC title to their NAC title. Right. Congratulations, Kim Terrell and Steeple. And she's going to get a real full ring run in there. They do the dog walk, the tunnel. Oh, she's going she's gonna to have them weave. <laughs> it's her national champion title. They've done it. There's their bar. And Steeple still remaining in a perfect sitting position. <coughs> a wave to the crowd from Kim. Steeple still tugging on the leash. Congratulations. Next dog is up, a German Shepherd named Ayla from Chrissy Roop. We are looking at the 20-inch preferred dogs. 
This is a beautiful, beautiful German Shepherd dog. A big dog, very well done through the opening sequence. She's going to make sure she gets that down dog walk. Both judges agree. I think she did a blind there after that panel. The, the A-frame obscures our view of that portion of the course a little bit. The 180. Very nice handling through that little portion of the course after the seesaw. And the A-frame's too high. Judge is going to give her a call. Run into a problem at the jump right after the A-frame as well. She does a really nice job of picking her dog up and bringing him from tunnel to wee pole. And looks like it comes out of the weaves a little bit early. These weaves are tough because they really are the weave to nowhere. Not just to nowhere, to a gate that is sort of physically intimidating to the dogs. There's not that much space from the end of the weave poles to the ring gate. Next up is our challenger round winner. This is Gumbo with Lori Zerberg, the Catahoula Leopard Dog. And this is a very nice dog that I think has a legitimate chance of winning this class. A little bit wide on the 270, but she's able to catch him. Beautifully done. Front cross here at the jump before the dog walk. She zooms ahead. And this is going to be a running contact. Very nicely in. A tough turn to the tire for such a large, strided dog. Does it beautifully in a beautiful wrap. From a dog of that size, that wrap at number 10 was amazing. And that, that contact. I mean, you can see how large his strides were. Rear cross after it does a and great it, job picking up. The handler is very good. This is a another wrap. The dog reads rear. Goes the wrong way. The handler recovers. Very nice. 40.89. That is going to be our first clean run. She is going to be the leader. Her dog went the wrong way, it looks well, like, on that third the, to last the run. Way and that then she, she did recovered. not attend. Oh, oh. That's right. That's, That's right. right. It's not, it is not wrong. It is just not what she expected. Now we have Tracy Golden and Bam, and there's an immediate uh, run by a fault there. That's going to take them out of the running. Tracy Golden and her border collie, Bam. Bam is a very nice sized border collie. She gets a good turn to the tire up onto the seesaw. Tracy's a very experienced competitor, multiple appearances, and Many different events, many different dogs. Nice front cross after the A-frame. Great job through the weaves. Very nice. It has to be disappointing when you have a problem right off the bat. Very nice run, 42.07. And now we have the last dog in the class, the only, cl the only dog that could uh, take away the title from Gumbo, and this is Rice with Sarah Baker, the Labrador Retriever. A beautiful opening. Now Sarah Baker runs several different dogs and several different heights, and I will tell you, she is a very nice handler. This dog is tremendous. A huge running contact, a big jump over that panel. She gets the turn, she puts in this front cross. Now, I love the way she went there because for the long, large dogs, that really shows them. Oh, a near refusal, but not. A blind cross after the A-frame. She's got this dog really moving well. And she is pushing. She is pushing this run. I think she's got a shot. She's going to go wrap here. Unbelievable. She's going for it. Beautiful run. That is going to be your National Agility Champion in the preferred 20 inch class, 39.6. Believe it. That is a big laugh. That is a happy laugh. Back over the dog walk. That run gave me goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps from their victory lap. For a dog that size, those were incredible running contacts. So congratulations to Sari Baker and Rice. I love the way she handled that course.
very aggressively. I love the dog's contact. I love the dog's size. She did a really great job. I've seen a couple of her runs all weekend long. Really nice. and that does it for all the preferred dogs. We are now looking at Robin Kletke with his Papillon Whimsy. Now this is your regular height classes here now. Robin's a very experienced competitor. He's won the National Agility Champion three times with his Papillon Tigger. He's won the National Agility Championship with uh, Minx, his Border Collie. They are the champs from last year. They also won the Invitational. Very experienced handler, does a lot of dog showing. Beautiful job picking up his dog. Even with a little Papillon, he was there at the tunnel. Beautiful, little wide. Nice job. That is an, that is an impressive run, 40.4. And that's just our first dog, so this is going to be a fast class. Lisa Evans and Gigi on the line now. She is the reigning national agility champion. And made it into this round on the challenge round. And you, you always see a lot of that over the years. A lot of the challenge round dogs going on to win the nationals. Beautiful job holding your dog on the seesaw. Beautiful wrap at number 10. She opts for the full wrap there. The 180 onto the A-frame. She's going to blind cross a good deep hit into the tunnel. Now she gets a little bit of a wider turn out of the tunnel and she's gonna hang back on the weave poles into the chute and it looks like she's gonna set up for a wrap again. Pull the dog around, beautiful wrap. And not quite not fast quite. enough. 40.83, so not quite fast enough to bump out Whimsy. Now the question is, have we just seen the two fastest dogs in this height class? John Yamasaki and Nikki, the Bichon Frise. And that is a beautiful running dog walk and a beautiful turn at the panel. A fantastic performance at the seesaw. Very, very nice wrap right there. Okay, I'm really impressed with this dog and handler. A beautiful A-frame, a blind cross after the A-frame. A little bit wide on the pickup after the tunnel and before the weaves into the shoot, still with a very nice time. I think they have a chow! It looks like the handler may have shielded the jump from the vision of his dog. And the dog came in behind him, blind crossed him, cut behind him, and came to the wrong side, did not take the 270 wrap. That's too bad because I think that time would have been really close. And the rest of the run was so fantastic. Oh, and this dog has taken off on its own, but she manages to save it. This is Leslie no Rudy and Gunner. No fault. No fault. Pembroke Welsh, Welsh Corgi. She was not ready for her dog to leave, but she was able to save that, even though it's a backside, which makes it extra hard to recover from. Great recovery on her part. Beautiful seesaw performance. Very, very nice wrap. Oh, and the bar comes down. Oh, that's too bad. Another blind cross after the A-frame. We see a lot of blind crosses coming from these uh, small dog handlers. Beautiful wrap at 18. At 41.233, a very, very nice run from Leslie and Gunner. Up next, we have Michael Finch. Fitch, excuse me, and his dog Bing, and his toy fox terrier. Okay, I think we have the wrong handler written down here, but this is a toy fox terrier named Bing. Okay, so it sounds like there are two handlers that run this dog. Takes a look at that off course jump, but she manages to keep him off of it. Very nice tight wrap. Another blind cross after the A frame.
The wee pole seems to be the cue for the audience to start cheering. Very nice turn there, no confusion. Finishes out the run 42.55. Not quite fast enough, but a very nice run. Next we have Andrea Samuels and Sparkle. They are the National Agility Championship champion from 2011, looking to add a second year's title. Goes wide on that back side. Did not read that at all. Was looking at the dog walk, but she's able to recover, and now they're on the dog walk. This dog is fast, beautiful running dog walk performance. Wide turn, but gets the dog to the tire. Very Brilliant nice. seesaw performance. Ran all the way to the end, which is a key for and any just small dog. There. Another blind cross, beautifully done with a running A-frame. I'm starting to think I need to do some blind crosses after these contacts. Beautiful weave performance. This dog is really moving. I think she was thinking about front crossing there and then decided she wasn't going to make it. Not quite enough. 41.55. Whimsy is still your leader with a 40.40. We are down to our last two dogs, Torment and Wren. Can either of these dogs? Janet Dunn is going to take Torment to the we'll opposite wing Let's as see. the uh, most of the class has been taking, to the left wing. Interesting. Now that is an amazing dog walk. Accelerated right down the end of that dog walk. You know, I've been amazed at how the small dog handlers have really embraced the running contacts. She's now she does front. a front cross That's after right. the A-frame. A little bit wide to the weaves. I think we're going to get a new leader here. 37.33, a new leader with only one dog to go. One dog that can knock them out. Of course, it's reverse seated, so this is going to be one of the fastest dogs of the class. Betsy Lynch with Wren. Janet Dunn and Torment are current leaders, and I love those contacts. Time to beat is 37.33. Beautiful push to the backside there. The dog wasted no uh, room on that jump. Just wrapped right around the wing. Beautiful Another running dog. Another running contact. I tell you, I feel like this whole class has running contacts. Unbelievable. Oh, a little, that was, that a was little close. close. That was close, but no call from the judge on the seesaw. Blind after the A-frame. And a beautiful performance. She's going to connect with her dog there coming out of the tunnel, get him into the weave poles. Uh, this time nice I do, it's not going to do it, I don't think. Nope. Close, 38.2, nice. your winner. 38.27, so could not knock out Torment, who was 37.33. Yes, Janet Dunn and Torment. And here she comes. Back into the ring. Former world team member. Janet Dunn and Torment. There's the victory lap. Up over the dog walk. Take a look at that running dog walk one more time in case you had any doubt. Uh, we'll jump into the arms. And here's the hug with the judge. That's right. Now we're going to move to the 12-inch class. That's the thing now. We're going to see if future judges are going to blame or credit this judge with starting the hugging tradition. Perhaps. I hear these judges um, have a, like an arm wrestling contest to decide who's going to judge which round of the Nationals. Trying to decide who's going to do challengers round and who's going to do finals. Well, this was a very uh, interesting design course. Got a lot of elements in there I really like. Designed by Carol Mount, judged by Carol Mount. They are moving this right along. They're wasting no time. The first 12-inch dog is coming in. This is Denise Kilpatrick with Tyler. Uh, Tyler's a world team dog, I believe. I know that Denise is. Very tight opening. 
She's going to run right through that dog walk. Gets a nice turn there to the tire. Very nice wrap there. All of the turns are very tight, wasting no yardage on the course. That dog did take a very strong look at the A-frame, but uh, Denise was right there, ready to catch her head. No confusion there on the wrap versus One of the very first blind crosses that we've seen after that wrap. After seeing so many in the challenge round, I would have expected to see more here. Most people are opting to finish out those last two jumps with the dog on the left, though. Now this is a real contender here. You're looking at the current reigning national champion, world team member, and the winner of the automatic European Open spot from Friday on that international course. Beautiful running contact, a little wide to the tire. Onto the seesaw, amazing stop. That was amazing. Face plant and a back jump! That's such a bummer because when a dog falls down like that, they're just not where you expect them to be anymore. And the handling can sometimes fall apart and there's no time to recover. I would tell you Bliss was absolutely the dog to beat in this class. And no disrespect to the dogs at the end. But Bliss came out of the challenge round and is an amazing dog. Up next we have Brittany Shesler and her Sheltie trip. She is from Texas. And this is Dr. Shesler to you. She is a doctor of veterinary medicine. Tripp has had a past appearance in the finals. And Brittany was actually just recently in the Westminster finals with her perfect dog walk. Other dog, a daughter of Tripp, the dog you see running now, beautiful rapid 10. She's got the 180. It is so quiet in here all of a sudden. I know, it's beautiful <laughs> running running A-frame, front cross after the A-frame. Picks her up a little bit wide, through the weave poles, the weaves to nowhere, into the chute, and she's gonna come wrap. Very she's got her on the left side. Very nice job. 40.846. Yes, Tyler was clean with 40 point something and I fell down on the job and didn't write the point something before it went back to go. So we need to wait on that. In the meantime, we have Ziggy with Estelle Robinson, EOT member. This is, this is the Chinese Crested. Chinese Crested of the Powder Crop. Ziggy, beautiful dog walk. Turn to the tire. Very nice seesaw. Beautiful rapid 10. Into the 180. Blind cross after the A-frame. Into the tunnel. That's a pretty good pickup to the weave poles there. Into the shoot, a blind cross. She's taking her dog the opposite way on that wrap. And the time is 40 point something. We have missed that time, so we're gonna have to wait it's until they post so those fast. results. Up next, we have All Les Saito and JJ. And He's a gentleman who crossed an ocean to be here from my homeland, Hawaii. Or as we like to say, Hawaii, oh no. He's got a refusal. He came in, he didn't take the panel jump. That's gonna take him out of the running. It is so tough to come so far. But he still has the opportunity to showcase his dog here. And he's doing just that, picking his dog up into the weed poles to the cheers of the crowd now. Really working it now, coming up on the wrap. The wrap here at number 18, a beautiful finish, a full post turn, 43.836. And we're going to update you on some times as soon as they come in. Tyler was a 40.40. That looks like the current leader. Trip was 40.86. So a little bit behind that. Now we've got Felony Shelty on course now with Robin Ann Swandert Staller. Beautiful dog walk performance. A very wide turn to the tire. Stops a little high on the uh, seesaw, but a beautiful rapid number 10 into the 180. Dogs are doing that very, very well. 
It looks like she's going to rear cross here. I like that. If you can't get to the blind cross, or rear cross serves that function very well. A little wide out of the tunnel to the weave, and she is peeling off. Testing the dog's commitment, has a great independence there of the weaves. A nice blind cross. Now, it's hard for people to get that turn. You keep the dog's momentum, but then it's hard to turn them from 18 to 19, and they're having to push into 19 a little bit. So 41.02, not fast enough to knock out the leaders. Now, we're just waiting on Ziggy's official time to see if they're a little faster than 40.40. Some very, very tight turns here right away on this course with... This is Radiance, Patty Gagnon. And she's coming off the Westminster Finals as well. So we've got a lot of dogs over here that you saw in the finals at Westminster on TV. No stranger to pressure, and she gets a back jump. She's coming to wrap number 10, and she gets a back jump. That's a risk that you have when you're doing those full wraps. She's got her dogs into the weave pulls now. She's looking to finish strong. Another wrap. This time she gets it. No back jump there. 39.755. It would have been a sub 40 time. It would have put them into the lead. So the leader is still Tyler with 40.40. Ziggy was 40.49. And now you're looking at a world team member, Terry Herman and Iggy. This is the poodle. Poodles are the new it dog in 12 inch, uh, the 12 inch class. Very solid dog walk performance. Excellent turn to the tire on the seesaw. A beautiful, brilliant, beautiful. Brilliant seesaw running all the way to the end. And talking the whole way. She's gonna rear cross the jump after with a very good result. Very nice turn from the tunnel to the weaves. Total independence on the weaves, getting to where she wants to be on course. She's gonna do that wrap and run it out. 37.35. So that is our new time to beat with three dogs to go in the 12-inch class. Up next, we have Angela Evers and Visa. This is a Sheltie. She's going to opt for the same front cross. And oh, takes the bar down. on that front cross that everybody's been doing. That's going to take them out of the running. And again, I tell you, one of the hardest things in agility is faulting so early in a run. But she's doing a great job, really showcasing her dog's skill and speed. A nice weave pull performance and turn to the shoot. And she's going to set up here for a wrap, do a full post turn, and very nicely done. 39.958, very nicely done. Visa and Angela Evers. Up next, Kathy Leggett, many time assistant coach to Team USA, European Open team member as well. Now running a dog named Shout. Beautiful backside there. Tight, tight, all through that opening to the dog walk. Beautifully done. Solid dog walk performance. Nice turn to the tire. Kathy's obviously no stranger to high quality performance. And she goes front cross after the A-frame there, a little bit wide to the weaves. I think that's the first spot where they have been at all wide on this course. Beautiful run. I think this could be the new leader. She carefully brings her dog around. There's some hesitation. Uh, 37, one, that is, that she is. is, she made it. Yeah. New leader, 37.164. There was definite confusion on the dog's part right before the triple. I almost thought the dog was gonna refuse it or end up jumping into the triple but she managed to save it. Nice job of continuing to move forward for her dog. And now there's only one dog that could beat her. This is Barb Davis with Sketcher, former world team member, 2013 National Agility Champion. Barb Davis, very experienced. And this dog is tremendous. That was a really close dog walk. It did not get called. A long turn to the tire. She's gonna go she the opts. opposite way. I like that. Yep. with the blind there. You get to keep all of the dog's momentum. The A-frame was beautifully performed. Uh, a little Sketcher, wide with a little slip there Sketcher to the slipped to the multiple leaves. times on this course. Just the style of the but dog she's, is to really put I, it all She's off. still going to win it. She's got it. She does. 35.775, two-time national agility champion Sketcher. They have done it. 2013, 2015. National Agility Champion.
Barb Davis and Sketcher. Amazing contact. The victory lap. Barb runs like a 25 year old. figured out what they're chanting over here, and it's Northwest. Oh, okay. I thought maybe they were chanting Dragon Quest, <laughs> Room Request, at your behest. But apparently they were chanting Northwest. Barb Davis is from the Northwest part of the United States, where apparently they have a lot of good dog agility people. That's right. And now we're, they're going to get ready for the 16-inch class. Oh my gosh, you blink and those, those uh, Volunteers are done with the jumps. We are ready to run the 16-inch class. We're starting with, let's see, Jean LaValle. She has two dogs running, so she had to move one of them up to the front. This is Sprint. This dog is just two years old and got their mock in just two years. Beautiful seesaw performance all the way to the end. A beautiful rapid number 10. The 180. A that barely a made that blind. barely made that blind cross. But she made it. I'd love to see this class start with a, uh, a clean run right here. Oh, she goes for the front. And she makes And it another front. Barely. That's beautiful. That may be a really good line. 37.958. She is going to be our first clean run, first dog, first clean run, and the current leader. So now that we've got a standard here. Now we think this is Diane Patterson and Cruiser. If it is, they're actually just coming off being a Westminster finalist as well. No coincidence that these dogs are showing up in both finals. A, a beautiful dog walk performance. A little slippage there before the tire. Good recovery. And a bar down. It looked like the dog thought he was going to do a rear, realized he was wrong at the last minute, tried to turn in midair, and took down the bar. It's the classic wrap versus rear question. Very, very nice wrap there to finish out. Now they do the wrap at number 18 very nicely when they get that second chance. Nicely done. 38.243, our current leader still, Gene LaValle. 37. Now we have an all-American dog, our only all-American dog in the 16-inch class. This is Hattie with Elizabeth White. And they came in off the challengers round. So you know this dog is fast. Very nice, solid dog walk performance. No question that they hit it. And they're all fast, but this dog is, I won the challenge round fast. That's right. Beautifully done here. She's going to go for the front cross, and she just gets it in there. Very impressive. Not a bad approach to the weaves. Strong performance. Into the shoot. And oh, she loses her dog, of course. Right out of the shoot. Driving really hard into the shoot. Her dog never turns. Immediately locked on and went off course there. That's going to take him out of the running. Up next, this is John Nice and Rush. Rush is a dog that is very well known. They've won the silver at the Agility World Championships. They were Westminster finalists this year. Even at their older age, they've still got it. They've still got the magic. John Nice and Rush. Nice solid dog, dog walk there. Good turn to the tire. The seesaw was very close. Confusion and back jumps. That is a rough spot. The handler has decided at the last minute where they're going, whether they're going to keep trying to get their dog to wrap or if they're going to go with the new direction and uh, wrap the opposite wing. So now we have some cheering as the dog finishes out with a nice time of 39 seconds. That's right. 
as you incorporate these wraps into your handling, for everyone at home who's going to set these courses up in practice, think about the wrap versus the rear. It's next, a tough spot. Next we have Sally Beckner with bricks. Bricks or brie? All right, a poodle. Very nice backside. Little slip there in the dirt. I'm going to give it the French pronunciation. All right. Accelerating through that dog walk, gets a wide turn afterwards. I find oh, that off of running. Think oh. it's off course right after the uh, seesaw there. That's right. I was going to say that um, I find after a running contact, when they head for a panel, for some reason they tend to extend a little bit over that obstacle. And they don't read turns quite as well. Oh, very nice job on the wrap there at 18 in combination with the blind cross. Now, it looks like we may have a shift in the order. This is Vivian and Kathleen Despignier. Now, they'd actually been to South Africa, I believe, once upon a time for the Agility World Championship. Wow, it's very that was fast a border collie. dog walk. She's going to go uh, wrap the dog on the right wing. And the dog misreads. And, and that is the danger of, of going that direction because the dog uh, can see that jump as a slice instead of backside. That's right, especially a dog like this who's been in international competition where every side is a possibility. Now that was very interesting. She handled the shoot. Uh, with dog on left, first person I've seen do that, but if you can beat your dog there by getting ahead on the weaves, uh, it opens up some handling possibilities. Our current leader and only clean run, Jean Lavalley and Sprint. I believe at 37.95, looks like we have a break in the action. I think they want to get Jean Lavalley back out here with cheer. They gave her a one dog break, but now they're not going to move on, I think, until it's her turn. Well, when we have a dog on the line, and I think that this is Marcy Mantell and Strike. Okay, you're right, that is Marcy. Now Marcy's a very experienced handler who's won a world championship with her dog wave, and now she's got this whippersnapper. Fantastic running dog walk. Heading up for the wrap and I'm not sure it. that was intended. No, I do not think it was. But it had she, a great result. She went with it. She was able to recover. She's going to try and pick her dog up here a little bit wide to the weave pulse. Now I think they are going to come in well under 37 seconds. Oh, I think she wanted a she wanted a blind. And oh no! The judge did not want to call that refusal, but she had to. The dog spun right It looked front. like what happened was she did the wrap at 18. She wanted to do the blind cross. She was out of position to do the blind afterwards. She ended up sending the dog over left, and instead of keeping the dog on left for both of the last two jumps, she rear crossed the second to the last jump. Very similar to what happened with Kathy Leggett. Very and tough. Shout. Kathy was able to yes, keep that yes, together. Yes, yes, very similar. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, Stripe was not. Jennifer Crank, she won the 18-inch spot. And she for the European with Open, the lucky. winner take all run on Friday, and th this is lucky. Beautiful wrap here at 10 to the 180. Jennifer has the long legs, that is the envy of uh, many handlers, letting her get to places on course to really manage those turns. She runs a lot of dogs. Beautifully done on the wrap. 36.27. She is going to be our new leader. That's Jennifer Crank. And now we have Jean LaValle back with cheer. Just in time to uh, try and beat that time. Her uh, time was holding with sprint, but was just beaten by Lucky. And so now she's going to come try to come out with cheer and lay down a new winning time. Jean LaValle, very experienced world team member. She's already run this course once. She's currently sitting in second place with her other dog trying to take over the lead here. Beautiful opening all the way to the seesaw. She gets a very nice rapid 10, 180. To the A-frame, she's speeding up, and she's it looks like she's rear. gonna have a rear. I don't know if that was planned or not. A little wide on the pickup after the tunnel. Shoot, she's gonna go for a front. Yes, she does, and a second front. She needs to kick her dog around her leg. She does it. 
And she keeps up all the bars, 36.95, not, not quite. quite fast enough. 36.957. She will move into second place and third place. So she's holding on to second and third. Jennifer Grank still our leader. Now we have Ann Swan and Kylie. This is an Australian cattle dog. Here we have Kylie with Ann Swan. Very nice, solid teeter. They're really pushing here, making sure she gets the contacts, though. I love seeing a cattle dog in the finals. She's got the attitude, the barking. She's going to go for the wrap to the left. Dog on right. Not quite, but a very nice run, 39.01 for Kylie, the Australian cattle dog, and Anne Swan. And we have a go Cheryl from the crowd. That's Cheryl Morris and her Border Collie Karma. The last three dogs, the three top seeds in the 16-inch high class are going to be Border Collies. And it's for a good reason, because Border Collies are tremendous athletes. Very nice wrap there. Getting the slight backside with no problem. She's going to rear cross, pick her dog up. Little wide dog does look at the A frame just for a second there. She's going to go for the front and take her dog to the right around that wing. She recovers, finishes strong, 37 54, not quite fast enough for the title. Now, I love the way she took that jump as far as keeping their momentum, but it sets them up terribly for the 1920 finish. That's right. So it's hard to know. All right, this we is have Cynthia Horner and Spice of Border Collie. A little slow there at the bottom of the dog walk, but they do get the creepy. contact. A solid seesaw, beautiful wrap. Beautiful wrap at number 10. A great 180. A fantastic turn to the tunnel. Oh. Slips in the dirt. The dog That's knew exactly where to go, but just couldn't keep his footing. The footing is a little soft in some places. Sets a four wrap. Almost loses footing again. Beautiful finish. 35.535. That's right. New leader. 35.53. All right. And our final dog to run, Kate Moreau. She won 16-inch Westminster this year. She is a finalist again. She has won the National Agility Championship with Quick. She has won the National Agility Championship with Driven. And now trying to do it with this dog. That is a grandmother, mother, daughter scenario. It would be unprecedented, to my knowledge. If anyone knows differently, please message us. That. Beautiful deep hit. Super oh. wide and off course. That is rough. After the, the dog panel. just went so wide it is off the very, back. I will tell you, it is very hard to turn these dogs running contact to a panel. Not easy at all. Even with a lot of collection cues from the handler. She does a really nice job of picking her up after the tunnel. And she was going for it, the trifecta. Didn't quite get there. A beautiful turn. She really, I think she did that end part. If you're going to turn your dog to the right after that jump, that's the tightest I've seen it done. Yes, congratulations to Cynthia Horner and Spice. 35.53. You are the 2015 AKC National Agility Champion. And here she comes back into the ring. And there they go. Wow. It's not even a loop. It's more like another practice. They're doing the weaves. They're doing the shoot. They're throwing in blind crosses. And the last blind cross takes her right to the judge where there's a hug. And some love for the new national champ. Now we have the largest single class of the night, the 20-inch class, 21 dogs in the finals. 19 Border Collies, only two non-Border Collies. Our, our non-Border Collies are a Gold Retriever and a Nova Scotia Duck Tulling Retriever.
And again, I blinked and the judges are up, I mean the uh, jumps are up to 20. The first dog, well, uh, it's not who I have on my sheet. <laughs> Looks like they are going to start with Linda Mecklenburg. This is probably going uh, to be Oh, she does have two dogs, yes. She's got yes. two dogs that are very close together by re reverse seating. So it looks like they're going to move this dog to the front. I assume this is going to be Wonder. Nice opening. She actually opts for a blind cross after the 270, which is a very nice combination. A beautiful running contact. A good turn to the seesaw. Beautiful seesaw performance. An excellent rapid number 10. A very nice 180. This is a woman with a lot of international experience. Well, she barely, barely makes, makes the, that blind cross after the A-frame. But the dog reads it wonderfully. She's and a really get nice pickup to the weaves. Some distance on the weaves. I think he's going to go wrap again. Yes, wrap and blind. Dog on right. Very nice one. 36.30. Here, this is Kyle Schumacher, not Kylie Schumacher. The, Kyle the, Schumacher. The crowd led us wrong in the. Uh, and Wendy, Border Collie Wendy. She's going to make sure she gets those contacts. She's running early. She wants to make sure that her run is clean. Very nice. Oh, and a refusal she, she really wanted a tight, tight turn there on that wrap, and she just gave a little bit too much of a collection cue there for her dog, who ends up refusing the jump. Now the crowd is going to give her some encouragement, let her know how much they appreciate her being in the finals. Gets a very nice wrap and blind there to finish out the course. 40.74. So we have Wonder, we believe, at 36.3, and now we have Deb, Goodhart, and Fizz. Tried to get a little distance on her dog there, and the dog just wasn't quite committed enough to that jump. Gets a refusal there. Nice, solid dog walk performance. She gets, again, we have a, a slight problem there, trying to do the wrap. The dog just turns around and back jumps. So she's going to get her dog into the weaves and finish out this course. Here we're going to redeem ourselves on the wrap, get a beautiful wrap, and finish out the course strong, 42.55. Now here we have Nancy Kima and 10. This is the dog that came out of the challenge round. Nancy's an experienced competitor. 10 is a tremendous dog with very reliable contacts. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, she's going to wrap her dog the other direction there on that wing. Whoa! A near collision. Does not really make the front cross, but somehow does. Stays up. She is keeping this run together. Huge distance on the weaves so that she can front cross and get a nice tight oh, turn here. Oh, the oh, judge is going to call a refusal. refusal. The judge rules that she crossed the refusal plane. If you draw an imaginary line from the number 19 jump and you extend it out to infinity, but that time, the dog crossed that line. But that time was faster than Wonder's time of 36.3, but with that refusal. Right, that'll take them out of the running. That's disappointing. But a really great run. Here we have Lori Zerberg with Gem. This is her second dog running in the finals. She's going for the blind there. Oh my and gosh, no. she does not make it. The dog, she's just not quite far enough on the other side of the A-frame. Dog goes to the wrong side of her body. Doesn't quite get the weaves to nowhere, and she's just going to finish out the run. That is the danger of the blind cross there. When it's late, it's often hard to recover. From Fairhaven, 
Next up, Jeff Patello and Jet. Very nice lines, very nice um, wraps there by his dog. Nice tight lines everywhere so far. A little high on the seesaw. Now the judge raised her hand. Maybe the upside of the seesaw. Ah, the bar is also down. A late front cross after the A-frame. This is a larger border collie. Still going to finish off. Crowd offering encouragement. <laughs> Nicely done. 39.14. Now our current leader is still Linda Mecklenburg and Wonder with a 36.30. And now we have our first non-border collie, a golden retriever named Snap, run by Mark Bills. I'm very partial to golden retrievers since I run one. That is a loud golden retriever. Ready to go. Beautiful push to the backside. Shaping the path there a little bit, getting some nice lines from his dog. Beautiful nice turn there. Beautiful dog walk, a little high, but the judges say that it's good. He does an amazing job of really sending his dog to that panel and then getting out in the front. He's going to wrap his dog. There he oh, is. He oh, takes, takes the bar. bar. That is a, a rough line to that jump. He's got very interesting handling options in there. Beautiful turn from the tunnel to the weaves. A really nice time of a 36.761. Next up is Michael Forsythe and Gibbs, a border collie. A nice blind cross at the jump before the dog walk. Dog is solidly in the yellow, a little bit wide to the tire, onto the seesaw. We've got a nice wrap at 10. Oh, the handler got a little confused, but he saved it and was able to get, his, get a very nice himself recovery. back on course. Oh. He tried to slow down using his motion, the handler body motion, to try and hit that A-frame contact, but the dog was not buying it. He came off a little high. Over the 18 jump, 19 and 20. Next up, we have Terry Simons and Ripper, a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. Terry's a high energy guy, and many of you may recognize him as this year's Voice of Westminster. He did a great job with the commentary for Westminster. And now he's out there running in the finals. He is a high energy guy. His dog loves life an awesome guy. Takes a look at that jump after the panel, but he doesn't go off course there. Very nice there. seesaw, very nice rapid 10. Into the 180. He is going to front cross and make his dog, make sure his dog hits that A-frame contact. Pick his dog up strong to the weave poles. He's going to wrap at 18. And run it out. Not quite fast enough. Very nice time, though. 37.42. Nice. That is not bad at all. Terry Simons and Ripper, they are going to move into second place. The current leader is still Linda Mecklenburg and Wonder, 36.30. Now we have Angela Dotson running Becca. Becca's a beautiful Merle Border Collie. Very nice opening. Slips a little bit before the dog walk. A solid contact there and uh, wide. She's, she's trying to get some distance on her dog, get it out ahead for the seesaw, and uh, just isn't able to control that turn after the panel. I think the dog goes the wrong way here. We've got a back jump on the wrap. The dog red rear. Takes a long look at the A-frame, but now into the weave poles. Very nice performance. Let's the handler get way ahead. She opts for the blind cross. Turns her dog to the right. Has very nice lines under there. Ends up with a 42.69. Okay, that's... All right, now we have Patty Drum and Dooley. 
It looks like we're going to not have Linda Mecklenburg and Scopey, who's on our list, so they may be giving her a little bit more rest between her two dogs. This is Dooley, who's overcome a health issue to get back into the ring, and now they're here in the finals in Reno. Running clean. They've got a good thing going here. It looks like Dooley went the wrong way, but she goes with it. She's got the 180. I don't even know if it's what she intended. I'll need to ask her after the run, but a bar goes down after the A-frame. A late drop on that bar after the A-frame. Nice weave pole performance. And he goes off course after the shoot as well. Nice finish, 38.645 for Patty Drum and Dooley. Well done. And it looks like we've got Stephanie Rayner here. She's part of the European Open team previously with her Border Collie now Spree. Very tight lines through this opening sequence to get onto the dog walk. This is a Mach 5 Border Collie. She makes sure that they get the uh, contact. Very nice wrap there. And very nice push to the backside. Very technical part of the course there, and they handled that very nicely. Full front cross. She definitely gives her dog some strong signals coming out of that tunnel. Very nice wrap blind there, finishing out strong, 37.84. So it looks like it is our current third place time. Now we have Ann Brow and Scream. She is actually last year's European Open coach. I believe she'll be the coach again this year. She's been a world team member with her other border collies. This is Scream. The whole arena has gone quiet watching her run. Scream is a big boy, big stride. I like watching him run. Very nice turn from the tunnel to the weaves Very there. Very nice. Very nice turn there. 37.60. Not quite enough to take over the lead. That's right, that is a current third place time behind Linda Mecklenburg and Wonder and Terry Simons and Ripper. And now Linda Mecklenburg is back. This is Scopey. She is the current leader. Let's see if she can beat her own time. She opts for the same 270 blind cross combination at jump number two. Front cross at jump number four. Beautiful turn at five. Good dog walk approach. Very, very nice turn there from the panel to the tire. Very nice Beautiful wrap. Beautiful wrap. No confusion on the dog's part. She does not blind the end of the A-frame. I don't know if she planned that different for her two dogs or if Rear she worked just fine. made Very that nice. change after almost missing the blind with her first dog. Very Another nice blind. Oh. Barely makes that blind cross after the wrap. 36.47. She almost beats herself, but not quite. So Linda Mecklenburg is now in first and second place. 36.30 for Wonder, 36.47 for Scopey. The next dog on the line, Margaret Barton, With running her Border Collie kite. They have made the challenge round, I believe the last two years in a row. Now they have made it into the finals with three clean runs in the opening rounds. Very nice opening. Kite is a litter mate to Winston, a dog we will be seeing in the finals later in the 24 inch height class. Beautiful, Beautiful dog, stop walk. dog walk. Tough turn to the tire. She recovers and goes on. She is making sure she has every contact there. Kite is a leggy beast, can really cover ground well. She rear crosses after the uh, A-frame there. Uh, she is peeling away on those weaves. Everybody is quiet, looking to see what kind of time they can put in. She gets that wrap. She's going to run it out. Clean. 37.68. Very nice. We've got a lot of 37-point runs Some here. things, yes. But it's Linda Mecklenburg who's sitting there with the 236 runs. Next, we have Kelsey Kirkpatrick and Ace. Ace has been in the finals before, 20-inch class. He has a fourth place finish to his name. Oh, and she falls Kelsey down. Falls she's down. Up. She's back up. She has a quick release stop. Oh, oh, no. 
I think she just had a hard time getting back on track after she fell down. She was really almost put it all back together. Oh, that was an unbelievable recovery. He had an unbelievable dog walk performance. Ace is arguably one of the best two-on, two-off contacts in that height class. Very nice. Nice run, Kelsey and Ace. Next up, Najee Berkos. With he has been in, Will. been in the challenge round many, many times. And this, this year, he finally got it right straight through to the finals with three clean runs. This dog is tremendous. Very close. And oh, of course, no. same oh. thing that Ace did. I think as you see these large dogs do this course, when they're zooming in off the, that contact, the dog walk, and they see that panel, it is hard to get that turn to the tire. You really need to control that turn to the panel. And I think uh, some of these handlers are having a little bit of distance trying to prepare for the next part of the course. That distance makes it a little bit harder to control that turn. There you go. Nicely done. And ladies, Najee tells me he is single. We have four dogs left in this class. Next we have Jennifer Crank running Sonic. Very nice, tight, controlled lines through the opening. And she gets that off course. These large the dogs are looking at that off course jump. They are not turning over the panel. They are not coming into the tire. And these are top handlers, very experienced dogs. I can tell you the 24 and 26 inch classes are taking a very careful look at what's happening here in the 20 inch class. And it will inform their handling decisions. Still another great run for Jennifer Crank. I don't think she has any nationals where she doesn't show up in a final or a challenge round. All right, now we have Sarah Baker running hops. Sarah Baker is one of my new favorite handlers. This is the second time she's been out here. We saw her amazing lab, running preferred. Watch this dog walk, amazing. Wow. You probably blinked and, and missed it. she got that turn. And she just barely got that. She really did. She really shakes Beautiful that path wrap to make sure chair. the dog knows which direction to turn over that wrap. She is going to rear cross, very nicely done. Pick uh, her dog up and weave. Oh my gosh, she slipped multiple times trying to make that turn. Oh my gosh, new she refusal. almost gets her feet off. A new leader, 34.72. That is unbelievable run. 34.72, new leader beating out Linda Mecklenburg with only two dogs to go. Prompting chance of Northwest, Northwest, Sarah Baker, one of my new favorite handlers from this event. And next we have Kim LaMonica running Rio, the last two dogs. Oh, she opts for the front cross after, rather than treating it as the backside, using a 270. Nice dog Very walk. Nice dog walk. Very nice dog walk. Very nice turn. Control turn at the panel. That's going to gain them some time over some of the other people. This is a small dog. So he can turn very well on a dime. Look at that. That's a beautiful turn out of the, the tunnel nice. there. Now they just have to finish this closing. Little slipping. Turn the wrong Turns way. Turns the wrong way. Oh, the back jump. There's just no time at all to recover. The, dog, the dog thought it was a rear cross, realized it wasn't, turned around, and the jump is just staring at them in the face. They're going to back jump. And no time for the right. owner to do anything about it. And here we have the last dog, Jedi, run by Susan McGowan. Our current leader is 34.72. That's Sarah Baker with hops. Oh my gosh, beautiful that was a turn beautiful at turn at the panel. Very nice wrap as well. This dog is having some very tight lines, uh, but a bar, bar comes down. down. Sarah that, Baker is the champ. That front cross it puts a lot of pressure on the bar. It was a very nice handling choice, but the bar did come down. Very Let's see nice. what the time was. 34.73. Oh my gosh. So if that bar had not come down, Hops would have won by one one hundred. 
34.72 versus 34.73. So unofficially, we've got Sarah, Baker, and Hops. Your 20-inch 2015 National Agility Champion. And then Linda Mecklenburg taking both second and third place. Victory lap. I love, love how Sarah Baker handled her dogs on these courses today. Now we're going to raise it up to the 24 inch class. This is a much smaller class. Only seven dogs made it to the final in the 24 inch class. Here she comes for the judges' hug. Gets the congratulations from Carol, and we are on to the 24-inch height class. I believe we are going to be starting with Curtis Meissner and Winston. Winston is a litter mate to Kite, who we saw in the 20-inch class. A beautiful 270 blind combination. We've only seen a couple of those. Very slick move there. This dog has a lot of leg. Nice turn over the panel jump onto the seesaw. It really controls that, that, controls that turn. Uh, I had feared for a refusal there, but the dog read it fine. Barely gets in that blind cross into the tunnel. Very nice turn there. A little slipping by the dog. It's a really tough turn to make. It is. Very nice handling there. Yes. Some of the tightest lines we've seen going that direction on the run. 37.79. Always great to start off with a clean run. Puts a lot of pressure on all of the competitors coming after you. Now we have the challenge round winner, Ethan, with Jennifer McDonald. Gets through the opening beautifully. You can just see that these are big border collies. These are border collies that measure into 20, and you can tell. 24. 24. She's going to front there. And she gets I, a call on the I, down on the A-frame. I'm surprised, from this angle, but, it's from this angle but we can't see it. Beautiful wrap blind there. Very nice time of 37.11, but an MQ on the A-frame. That would have given her the lead, but with the A-frame call, Winston still in there as the leader. This is Angie Benequisto and her young border collie, Echo. Angie Benequisto, Beautifully handled opening. Fantastic dog walk performance. A little wide, look, takes a long look at that off course jump, but she's able to get him back. Gorgeous seesaw performance. Beautiful rapid 10. Great on the 180. Keeps that bar up. A crazy front cross. I don't know how she manages to get that front cross. A near cross. collision. Very close. She gives him a little break right before entering the chute. It's the first person I've seen do that, but it worked beautifully. New leader, no. The take last the bar. bar. The last bar fell down, 37. Would have been the leader, 37.06, but the bar comes down. Your leader is still 37.79, Winston and Curtis Meissner. Here's Kelsey back again with legitimate. Now she Legit. just ran ace and she was the one who fell and got back up. Now she's got legit. She's going to make sure he hits that contact. That same off course. It is a very hard off course there when you're hanging back like that. The you can't exact control. same off course that Ace took. No and luck again others. the second time. Yes. 
her dogs are not the only ones. You're certainly right about that. Beautiful sliding seesaw performance. Whoa, very nice performance from the seesaw to the A-frame. Very She's nice, tight handling. Legit is a very young dog. I think this is their first nationals. I think so. Very nice ride. So fantastic to be here in the finals. 41.63, of course, off course of the time doesn't really... A great weekend by Kelsey. Anytime you show up and both your dogs make the final, you've had a good weekend. So. And the next person up is Nancy Guys. Nancy Guys. As a competitor. Let's see if she can win another National Agility Championship. 2001, 2002, she won with her Border Collie Riot. This is Scoop. She is the coach of Team USA. For uh, many years. For the Agility World Championships. This is Scoop. Good solid hit wide he after the panel. He thought about that jump, but she was able to call him off. Able to get it to the number 10 jump, to the 180. He's doing great. She is running in for that front cross. And she makes it. He keeps the bar up. She is patting her thigh and getting him into the weaves. Peeling away from the weave poles, headed for the shoot. It looks like she's going to do a wrap, and she does it very well. We could have a new leader. 36.79. We have a new leader, Nancy Guys and, and only Scoop. two dogs to go that can beat Nancy Guys and Scoot. Their time was 36.79. The next dog is Stacy Campbell and Rue. They were the winner of the inaugural Westminster event. They and the, the 2013 National Agility Champion. No stranger to high pressure finals. 2013 The All-American has a very nice rapid 10, moves into the 180. Barely very makes nice, that blind, very but close, but gets, gets there it. in time. Very nice turn there, no slipping on the dog's part. Seems to be very sure of her footing. Very nice. Very nice wrap, very, very tight. Blind. Not quite going to be fast enough, 37.99. Very nice put them run. in third, behind Winston, who is behind Nancy Guys and Scoop. So 36.79, your time to beat Maria. Madamo, according to the announcer of the loudspeaker, with Gromit, last dog this class, last dog that could take away the blind. title from Nancy Guys. Oh, and he's a barker. She's got a blind cross that lets her get really far ahead on the dog walk. Let's see if she controls this turn. She, uses she did the a blind. reverse spin. That's right. She's doing a lot of blinding. Over the 180. Another, Another reverse, reverse spin. spin. Getting some nice tight lines here. Barely makes that front cross, holds it together. Gets her dog's head. Oh In my gosh. Face. Beautiful. Unbelievable turn from the tunnel to the weaves. She is going for the win. She gets a nice turn blind. I think she might have it. 36.77. She's she got it. She did it. She did it by two, two one hundredths. That is your national agility champion, 24 inch. 36.77. Nancy Guys' scoop was 36.79. Unbelievably Maria tight Gromit. performance. She needed every one of those tight turns, including that incredible one coming out of the tunnel to the weaves. Without any of those, she would not be her national champion. Brilliant performance. An amazing final. She runs screaming <laughs> to hug the judge. An amazing run to deny Nancy Guys her third national championship. Amazing. And they are going to pose for the picture. That is one excited handler. And now we've arrived at the cream of the crop. They rise to the top because 26 inches is the highest of all the height classes. They jump higher than anybody else. And now that I'm done saying all the obvious things, we're gonna have six dogs in this height class. Tori Self is the, is the person who came out of the challenge round, so we got five other dogs in addition to Tori and Revolution. And I believe we're gonna start with famous Jessica Aju. As they finish up with the picture taking over here and the setting of the bars. Now Jessica and Famous had three really amazing runs. I believe they took one bar in a round somewhere. Their, their overall composite time, unbelievable. This is a dog now I, that you recognize even a year ago was brilliant. And now after a year of seasoning and practice and trialing 
they are even better. They've improved their handling. The dog's even better than last year, which is an amazing thing to say. Beautiful push there on the 270. Really trusted her dog and moved on. In fact, she is doing that very well everywhere. Beautiful. Fabulous stopped contact. And an amazing turn off of that panel. Oh my gosh. An she amazing is putting in an amazing seesaw. run. Another reverse spin there to tighten up those lines. She really controlled the number 10 wrap. Gets her dog's head. She, she had her hand in the tunnel to do it. Amazing. That is the only place they've been wide. Dog recovers. 33.98. That is going to put a tremendous amount of pressure on the rest of the class to have such an amazing run as the first run of the class. The crazy thing is that there are dogs left in the field that could beat that time. So we have Tori Self and Rev. They came in off of the challenge round. Rev is the 2011 National Agility Champion. They are a two-time world member in 2011 and 2012. None they were they were not at nationals last year. They are back this year, and they're back with a vengeance. None of the dogs in this class are going to be able to give an inch. Everybody is going to be pushing for that title. Beautiful Very turn. Nice turn. Beautiful turn there. Not quite fast enough, 34.74. Those were two amazing, flawless runs. Now, neither of those dogs had running contacts, and their times were still amazing. Next up, we have Deanna Fairchild and her border collie, Quinn. This is the first person we've seen uh, lead out to the takeoff side of that backside jump. That works out very nicely for that team. Essentially a force front cross there. Uh, gets ahead on the dog walk. The dog's going to catch her a little bit. Very nice turn after the panel. She's going to turn her dog right after that jump. Is she the first person to do that in this height class? In this height class, yes. I like that move. Oh, oh they get a call on the A-frame. It looks like she's trying to come in for the front cross. And it may have had something to do with her missing the contact. That is still such a really, really good weekend. You know, I'll tell you an interesting thing. Famous had a fault, but still got in. And uh, the 26-inch class is a class that had someone come in without three clean runs. So very, very interesting. It's a small class, self-selecting pool, top-notch competitors, usually all vying for the international teams. Dan Wolfson and Stella on the course now. A little bit wide, almost takes the off course after the panel. But he pulls it back together. He would love a clean run here. He's had a great weekend to be here. Any weekend that you're in the finals, out of the 26-inch class, you've done a lot of things right. Fantastic. It looks like he's going to go for the wrap here at 18. Uh, delays the blind cross a little bit and puts in a 39.15. We've got two dogs left. Shelly Perman and Tech is going to be next. That was an incredible time that set down by Famous. 33.98 is the time to beat that first dog that ran. Tech with a nice start here. Very nice dog walk performance. And so far I've not seen any running contacts. It may be that all of the running contacts dogs were knocked out. She gets called on the seesaw and that's going to end them. She takes an off course there on the 180. Not easy to manage when you're behind, uh, behind the dog. A good turn to the weaves. She's just going to finish out here, the rapid 18. And we are down to our last dog. If any dog can do it, it's definitely this one. They are the reigning Crufts representatives from the AKC. They competed at Crufts. They won the National Agility Championship two years ago. They were on this year's world team. 
At the most recent Agility World Championship, they finished third place individual combined. And they need the to bronze beat bronze medalist in the world. A 33.98. 33.98. And she is pushing. She needs to because Famous put in an unbelievable run. Beautiful dog walks, beautiful turns. She is going for everything. She is pushing, pushing, pushing everywhere. Wow, they're, they are putting in a fantastic time. Oh, Gets a little checks the stride. check stride there. Little scary, little slip. Little slip before the weaves. It's, it's going to be really close. Yeah, she's got to run. She has a chance. 33.81. No. Oh, she got oh, she it. She did. She did get it. 33.81. Unbelievable. Pace was 33.81. Famous was 33.98. I can't imagine putting in such an amazing run and then having Pace come in and beat it by just a little bit for his second National Agility Championship title. But fantastic runs by the entire class, by the entire field of dogs. Really a fantastic finals to watch for every height class. I really enjoyed doing the commentary with you, Esteban. We had thank a great time. Thank you for time. doing the commentary with me, and thank you to Four Legged Flicks for putting on this live stream for free for everyone to watch. Make sure you stop by their site, support them with your donations. They did a tremendous job all weekend long. Congratulations to all the finalists, all the winners, all the competitors who are here at this fantastic event. And it looks like everybody's leaving. <laughs> we are out. <laughs> Thank you.